Welcome to this um, study in Finland webinar. Uh, my name is Anna Korpi and I am the Education and Science Counselor here at the uh, Embassy of Finland in uh, Singapore. Today we have um, uh, titled this di discussion as a, a student panel, a discussion with the uh, international students in Finland. We just hosted uh, another webinar two hours ago, uh, or three hours ago actually, with the uh, with more sort of practical study in Finland uh, approach, and uh, that recording uh, will be available after after this uh, session uh, on the Study in Europe website. Um, Thanks for, in general, to taking an interest in Finland. Uh, we are really happy that you are here, and uh, um, we are very, very excited to that you get to hear a little bit more from the uh, the true uh, experts themselves, our international students. So today I have uh, uh, with with me here in the panel uh, actually uh, eight international students from the different universities in Finland, and. Uh, very shortly, we will go into having uh, discussions with them about their experiences. But before we do that, um, I will just very, very briefly share just a couple of things about Finland, because uh, having been here in the um, in uh, Singapore and Southeast Asia, where, where the study in Europe uh, fair now is also um, mostly targeted, we have known that Finland is not so known always, so I think it's good to kind of start off some time with uh, with um, uh, a little bit of uh, of uh, where we come from when we talk about Finland. So let me just share this very briefly. All right. First of all, in this web, in this first. Um, uh, slide. Uh, what is most important is the website here, studyinfinland.fi, which is your sort of go-to website when you talk about when we talk about the higher education in Finland. It has general uh, information about Finland, Finnish, uh, the, the culture and country, but also especially the links and the information about all of our universities and universities of applied sciences. So now, if you are very interested, this is your address. Then. Um, where are we? Of course, now we are still, uh, we are in Southeast Asia, most of us, uh, but Finland is actually situated in the very north of Europe. Uh, we're part of the Nordics uh, and, and part of the European Union. So, of course, we, we can say that we are quite long from, for example, from Singapore, but in the normal times, uh, when we are not living in pandemic times, uh, it's quite convenient, actually, to, to get to Finland with uh, direct flights, for example, from here from Singapore and, and many other places in Asia as well. Um, what is Finland? Uh, we are, of course, very much known for our education, both in the basic education sector, but also in the higher education. Um, as you saw from the videos in the beginning, uh, we are very green in the sense that uh, much of our country is actually uh, nature and, and we take pride in our clean air, water, and, 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 and the nature in general. But we are also very green in the sense that Finland is one of the countries that wants to be the most ambitious with, for example, climate change goals and, and becoming, uh, for example, carbon neutral by 2035. Um, we are, of course, known for the technology capabilities, and I know that in this panel now there's also students that are, for example, particularly studying, for example, IT fields. Uh, I'm sure one of the reasons has been that Finland is known for companies like Nokia and innovations in, in general. Something to mention, especially for Asian students, is that we are uh, one of the safest and most well-functioning societies in the world. And for example, here in Singapore, people are used to very much safety. And, and I always like to say that in uh, Finland, we are experiencing and we are fortunate to have a uh, very similar situation there. Like I said, we are part of the European Union and uh, uh, part of the, the, in, the Europe uh, in, in general. We have 13 universities and 22 universities of applied sciences and more than 500 degree programs in English. Uh, it's safe to say that we don't expect you to 
no finish when you come to study with us. Uh, indeed, today we're talking about the English speaking in English language opportunities. So now I think I will um, stop stop uh, my monologue here and really want to hear from our international students uh, on the panel today um, about their experiences. Like already mentioned, uh, there's a chat um, chat in here in the uh, uh, on the webinar and please feel free to, to pose any of your questions to for example, of course, for us at the embassy, but we have also people online from our universities, uh, outside of just the students, but also other colleagues. Um, so they are happy to answer your questions on the chat. And then we will also try to take some questions for, for the students uh, at the end of this discussion. So um, without further ado, I would like to welcome all of our uh, international students. Uh, you, you see them already. and. Uh, I would like to actually, instead of me speaking any, say, talking any more, I would like you to hear from you. So um, maybe I will ask each of you to briefly uh, introduce yourself, who you are, where you are from originally, uh, and then of course say a few words about your university or your University of Applied Sciences so that the audience knows uh, where in Finland you are studying. So I'm going to start with um, uh, Hui Ha from Vietnam. Go ahead, please. And sorry about the pronunciation again. <laughs> I know it's it's perfect. It's really perfect. <laughs> Thank hi, you. hi everyone. Um, my name is Hui Ha. I'm from Vietnam. I'm uh, a third year student at Hamp. My major is about international business, and uh, the campus that I am studying in is in Valetokoski. It's um kind of southwest in uh, in Finland and uh, it's kind of very near to Tampere city uh, the second biggest city in uh, Finland so uh, nice to have you here and if you have any questions I'm willing to share my experience with you it's really really interesting here in Finland thanks very much um, and then I will, um, and thanks for being so kind about the pronunciation, <laughs> I think it's still a, a little bit uh, overstatement, but yes. Then I will uh, move to Ekaterina, uh, you are from uh, Russia, go ahead please. Yeah, good morning, afternoon, evening, uh, depending on whatever you are, my name is Ekaterina, you can call me Katya if it's easier. Uh, originally, as you already said, I'm from Russia, but I moved to Finland, uh, to be a little bit more precise, to Helsinki approximately one year ago to pursue my second master's degree in marketing. My, uh, like the best university in the world is my university, which is Hanskin School of Economics. Uh, we have like uh, two campuses in Helsinki, which is the capital city of Finland. And the second one is in Vasa, which is kind of a little bit closer to Sweden. <laughs> If you wanna be like maybe more international in this uh, case, our our university provides bachelor's and master's degrees, but uh, unfortunately the bachelor's degrees are held in Swedish. But maybe you're like a super proficient in Swedish. But when it comes to master's degree, we offer programs in both Swedish and English. So feel free to join us, and thank you for having me here today. <laughs> Thanks so much, and uh, I like the sort of uh, the marketing approach that you said that Hanken Han is already the best university in the world. That that's the spirit, I'm sure. Then we will move to to Alicia from uh, Spain. Go ahead. Hi, hi everyone. Um, so my name is Alicia, and as you already mentioned, I'm originally from Spain, uh, but I'm now living here in Finland because I moved to study my master's at the University of Helsinki. And um, well, this university is located in Helsinki, the capital, and um, it's one of the leading research universities um, in the world. And it's also um, quite multidisciplinary. So they offer a bachelor's uh, program in English in science, and then um, 36 
master's program in English and 32 doctoral programs in English as well. And then on top of that, the Finnish and Swedish programs as well. And I'm currently studying my master's degree in changing education at this university. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you are studying in, uh, in a very topical field, especially thinking of, uh, for example, the pandemic that we live through today, that for example, here in this part of the world, uh, many schools have been closed and the challenge will be with education for many, many years to come. Thanks very much. Then I will move to the University of Juvascula and uh, we have uh, Maria and uh, Milan there. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. So I am Maria Maruli. I'm from Greece originally, and uh, I moved last year to Finland to study at the University of Juvascula. I'm doing my master in educational sciences, and this is Milan. Hi, I'm Milan. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and now I'm in my second year of the master program Information Systems. And during my stay in Finland, I really got to respect the, the Finnish culture and the Finnish people are so kind and respectful. So I am enjoying my stay here. Thanks very much. It's nice to hear you say that sometimes people think that Finnish people are actually rude because we are so quiet and we don't say very much. But uh, it, for us, that's not usually rudeness. It's more like we just don't have something specific to say. So it's really nice that your experience is that we are we are we're nice there. Well, thanks. Um, then I will move to uh, Oheneba from uh, you're studying in uh, Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. Go ahead. Right. Hi. Um, so yeah, my name is Oheneba, as mentioned earlier, and I'm studying information technology in Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. Uh, Metropolia is located in the Helsinki, which is the capital of Finland which is very nice uh, in terms of extracurricular activities and all the other good stuff that comes with being in the capital. Um, Metropolia has a lot of, a number of uh, mas uh, bachelor's and master's degrees available in, in English, especially uh, the ones that I'm, I'm, obviously the one I'm doing, which is information technology. And then there's like uh, electronics and stuff in healthcare, et cetera. And um, yeah, I'm a final year, student just doing my thesis right now and um, what else one what I love most about Finland is that everything operates as they should so you can have peace of mind and you can really put a put a price on peace of mind and <laughs> that's my favorite thing about Finland because if there's peace of mind you can just go about what you actually want to do and not worry about extraneous things and that's why I would tell people to come to study in Finland Thanks very much. Um, we, of course, as fin Finnish people, we are also very pragmatic and that's something we also appreciate. And our last session was something about the fin Finland happiest country in the world. And I believe that that fact that you just mentioned is probably one of the reasons why we are happy, because it's like, like yeah. I said, we don't have to worry about that kind of things. You are originally from Ghana, right? I think, yes. I don't know if Ghana, you said West that. Africa. Yeah. yeah, I might yes. have overlooked that. Okay, great. Uh, then we have uh, Budhi from um, uh, originally from Sri Lanka, and you're studying in Samk, right? Hey everyone, I'm Budhi, and I'm from Sri Lanka as Anafe, and also I'm studying international tourism. Currently, uh, I'm studying at the University of Applied Sciences, uh, which is located in compared to those all the big cities. Uh, my city is like really small, but it is really convenient. Uh, so we also have a lot of interesting programs such as AI, international tourism, economics, and also we have two uh, universities. Uh, one is located in Rauma, which is like a UNESCO World Heritage site. Actually, it is a quite interesting city. And also we have some online courses as well, and also back both bachelors and masters as well. So what I like about Finland is like the, the nature and also the northern lights. Unfortunately, I, I was unable to see it as soon, but I've been hoping to, I'm hoping to see it as soon as possible. 
Thank Great, you. yes. Um, especially uh, since uh, I'm here in Singapore, this is something that the Singaporeans often ask us as well, that the when, when can you see the northern lights? But isn't it true that you see oh, mostly see them in the northern Finland, in Lapland, and, and when it's the most coldest and darkest time of the year? So that's why you have to endure to, to see them for sure. Thanks very much. And finally, and but uh, last but not least, for sure, we have uh, Quinn, is that right? From yes, uh, Vietnam. Right, yeah. Okay, great. So Go hi ahead, everyone. Yeah, I hope you are having an amazing day and uh, thanks for having me and thanks for joining with us. Uh, I am Queen Yang, but you can call me Daisy. And uh, I am from Vietnam and currently I'm the final year student in Southeastern Finland University of Applied Sciences, or we call it SAMC here. Uh, and I study international business. And actually, uh, our uh, university has four campuses located in four different cities, uh, which is Kovala, Mikkeli, Savolina, and Kotka. And we offer a lot of uh, international degrees uh, from bachelor to master and also for open university. And yeah, I'm much looking forward to the discussion and can't wait to share with you guys the journey I have here so far. So thanks. Thanks very much for all and then for those introductions. I think it's always a little bit challenging for, for international colleagues to understand where in the future, which country, which cities are where in Finland. But, uh, but this is a good overview to, to kind of highlight that we have actually universities and universities of applied sciences in all parts of Finland, in the north, in the west, in the east and the south. So, um, the, so you, have, you will find the opportunities uh, everywhere and then also they will have their own sort of specific characteristics basically also um, based on uh, where they are located. For example, where uh, I think where Budhi you are located in Samk, I think they for example have sea captain training there that uh, is relevant for the region for example. So these kind of characteristics you will find for sure. Okay, uh, some of you already mentioned that uh, why you came to Finland, but of course I would like to, to hear a little bit more on this. So I thought that um, maybe uh, you could share with us uh, why did you choose to study and, and come to Finland and uh, to your particular university. So if I first ask this from, um, for example, from Piha, please go ahead. Why did you choose Finland? Well, I, I got this from a referral, uh, honestly, from a referral from my uh, teachers in Vietnam. And she, she said that Finland offers the best education system in the world. So, and she knows that I would love to study um, international. Uh, I would love to be an international student already. So that's why I, I want to um, apply to study in Finland. And, but it was quite late. That's why they just only have one option left in Hamk at that time. And then I chose it just for that. It's maybe just destiny chose me, maybe. <laughs> I, but yeah, when I study international business, it's really opened my uh, experience for me. It's not, it's not just about the, the degree that I have been doing. Um, studying, it's just uh, about knowledge and information, but the experience of living and enjoying the student life is really more um, precious, I think. That's real. That's what I like. And uh, maybe that's also the reason why I chose it for the first time. Yeah. Thanks for ch sharing that. I think sometimes often when we uh, think about our, our sort of path, especially from uh, if we look back, then often it, there's uh, quite a bit of luck that is uh, is needed, of course. How about you, Ekaterina? Why did you come to Finland and to Hanken specifically? I have a bunch of reasons to, to do it. Uh, first of all, I have it, like already studied at two Russian universities. I had some kind of like really big experience of how it works in Russia, but I really wanted to try something new uh, because with no doubt when you're like uh, closed and limited in one country, you you can't really feel this like, international environment when you're, but really, when you really want to try it, no one stops you. 
And why I particularly choose Finland? First of all, like maybe this is like a relevant reason for me, but not from guys from the, from Singapore because Finland is like the closest country uh, to my country. I used to live in Saint Petersburg, so it was kind of easier for me to move from Saint Petersburg to Finland uh, to Helsinki in particular. Uh, but it doesn't matter that I like moved and started from like the zero, I searched the educational market and I chose Hankin just because like, first of all, it's like a business school with really a great educational background with an experience with more like 100 years of experience. Uh, and even though I study marketing, Hankin offers uh, also Major such as like business and management if you're interested just like in the overall over your finance financial studies and accounting if you're more like to be an accountant humanitarian logistics which is really interesting major just because it's like it's this thing that's really important especially now with this like COVID crisis because to some extent uh, some countries really suffer from the lack of uh, special suppliers and uh, especially vaccines are uh, also one more important factor is which is really was important for me is the system of scholarships are uh, as an international student it's really important to have some kind of financial support so Han can provide this support especially for international students yes you need to compete for this but it is based only on your educational background your educational success so it's really an honor, like it's really honest. Yeah. Thanks very much. And that's a very good point that you raised that, that uh, it's good to mention to, to the viewers that, um, uh, of course, yes, we have tuition fees for, uh, for students outside of the European Union, but uh, then all of the universities are required actually to also offer scholarships. So those are available, but they, um, you, like you said, you have to indeed uh, compete or, or at least show, for example, your academic performance for it, or they might have some other systems. And you apply for the scholarships as you apply for the degree programs as such. That's a very good point. Uh, finally, I think I will po uh, ask still this question from Ohene, but you already mentioned that uh, something that you appreciate about Finland, but what made you actually come to Finland in the in the very beginning? Right. So um, I had lived here earlier for a few years, maybe yeah, a few years way back. And then I moved back to Ghana. And then when it was time to decide where to go study, I had been here. So I knew how things function really well. And also, even at the primary school level, the level of infrastructure and like the access to things that you need for your education just like uh computers uh, uh uh all of those things that you are, are part are necessary a part of uh, your education and they're there and they're you there's no like restrictions on their usage that are like uh, extraneous like that and then also i talked to a few friends about um studying here so some few friends that i had made back in the day like a few older guys and uh yeah everything they had to say was really positive and it was just great and then also my dad did his phd here so uh yeah it was just like a lot of like yeah without a doubt this is tick um all all signs kind of pointed at it because yeah because all of the uh, factors and the experience we've had here have been really positive and uh, yeah, so that was one of the reasons why I chose. But then the choosing my specific uni was more based on the people that I, the friends that I'd made who had studied here. And that's why I chose Metropolia in, in particular. Yes, and I think this is one of the reasons why we indeed wanted to have, for example, this uh, session with you, with you guys. That, uh, like you, you mentioned this kind of re like, and also uh, here you also mentioned this that somebody referring you to something, uh, to a direction, maybe to a university, to a program, or even to a country, is so important because when you're thinking about totally strange countries far away, then it's uh, otherwise might be very difficult to kind of 
pick up your life and, and bring it there just without any any connections or social. And this is, of course, what we see often that somebody comes because uh, a relative or a friend has come, come in. Um, can uh, I quickly add one please. more point? Um, for please. someone coming from a, a faraway place or exotic place, etc., you might think that Finland is a small place or the diaspora of people from your country here might be small, but that's not the case. There's a lot of African markets, Asian markets, and there's a lot of other people from Asian countries here, a lot of people from African countries here. So the uh, um, homesickness or feeling alone in a place where you have no connection to is not that bad, or it's not, I would say it's not bad at all because you have people who are from where you are and can help you navigate things. That's a thing that just came to me and I had to say that now, yeah. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, really. Of course, we always want to say that, for example, Helsinki and our cities are very international nowadays, but uh, it's still very important. Can you find, for example, your favorite foods there or or can you not? So that's that's a good point. Please go ahead. I uh, I have to add something to uh, uh, my friends from Ghana uh, that the, the library system, like if you come to Finland for the sake uh, of study and uh, education, the library system in Finland is like the perfect place that you can have. Uh, everything is free in library and even uh, especially the, the one in Helsinki Center or the where you can um, where you can like borrow a sewing machine, uh, a computer that like set up for you specifically to build some 3D graphic designers and um, like a virtual game rooms for you to play when you have free times. And the, and when there was one experience that I, I feeling nostalgic sometime. And when I came to, to that library and I found one book, it is written in Vietnamese. And I say, wow, really, that is, that is the biggest a library that I have ever had that oh Vietnamese is here so everyone is here so you may not feel lonely in Helsinki at all or everywhere in Finland so don't worry yes and I think the the library you're mentioning is really the uh, Hel new Helsinki Central Library Audi and uh, that was sort of uh because when Finland turned 100 years old uh, a couple of years ago that was the sort of our government's gift to the people and and that, that has been sort of the idea there that the, the, whatever is of course available there um uh, of course books and everything else but also there's like so like you mentioned showing machines and 3d printers and and, and different kinds of things Thanks for pointing that out too. Then I think I will ask about a little bit about your studies. Um, if I, I could turn to uh, Maria and, and Milan there in uh, Yvaskula, could you explain to us, uh, for example, uh, what does your typical uh, day of studies look like? And of course, maybe I would ask about the times where we don't have COVID and everything is online and not <laughs> telcos. If I think about your normal student life, if you can share something about that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so first of all, I forgot to say that behind us, you can see the campus, part of the campus in Uvascula. So you can see on the one side uh, the campus of the physics and on the other side, the business school. So uh, I would say like a normal day, I haven't experienced a normal day so far because last year was um, with the pandemic and uh, we were having our lectures in the morning online. So hopefully uh, this semester we will be able to attend on campus. They are already uh, started uh, having some courses in the campus. So um, usually the talk courses take place in the morning and until four o'clock in uh, the afternoon. So we have some gap between the courses in order to go for lunch. Usually here they're eating lunch at uh, 12 o'clock. So we're going uh, to student restaurants for lunch and then continue our classes until four. And then uh, I usually go um, to the gym after that or to some other extra um, activities like bouldering or basketball training. There are sport clubs, many sport clubs in Yvaskula is uh, very popular for um, the activities, uh, the variety, variety of activities. And especially in the winter, there are many uh, winter uh, sports that uh, we can do and enjoy the nature, go for a hiking. Uh, in the evening, I uh, usually go to sauna, which I really like. I've never been before. Uh, I came to Finland, but I really appreciate it. It makes me very calm and 
um, have a chilling evening with that. Uh, I also have some meetings with associations because uh, the student life is very active here. There are many uh, clubs and associations that students can take part and um, either engage and be part of the student union in the subcommittees or in other uh, associations. Uh, so that's more or less how my life, my student life looks like and about my studies. My faculty, my uh, master program offers uh, six specializations and that's actually the main reason why I chose this program because it has a very big variety on the uh, topics that it offers and flexibility because we can choose more than one specialization. And I have to say that in the first, sem in the first uh, two semesters, um, the workload was a bit huge. So we had a lot of uh, working and studying and reading, but now in the second year, it's much more relaxed and um, we also got the help of uh, the second year students that they were really supporting us with the courses. I don't know if Milan wants to add something. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the most thing I really like about the, the university is that they also provide the, the student meals. So when you're studying in the morning and then you have a break and then you can go with your friends, you can you can uh, have lunch and then you can talk about what you just study and share share your stories. So I really enjoy that about the, about the life in Yuvaskla. Yeah, and isn't it so that the in your picture, the lake behind you uh, over uh, in wintertime is actually frozen and usually then they will put up, put up a big skating rink actually there. So then you can be skating there, maybe skating in some sports you didn't do before, but <laughs> if you are willing to learn, then uh, there's quite, op quite uh, great opportunities for that there, for example. Yes, they have like normal ice skating, but also like the cross country skiing they do mm, on the lake. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, it's see. very nice. And yes, and I'm really happy that Maria, you said that you like sauna because, of course, yeah. that's something we it's very deep in our DNA in Finland, but not all the foreigners always like it so much. Yeah, it was so funny because during summer holidays, when I was back in my home country, I was missing so much this feeling of just being in sauna and having my own time relaxing. It's I really appreciate it. Yes, and I think some, again, people when think about like, why are you supposedly the happiest country in the world? Or oh, Hennepa already mentioned the fact that things work, but I would put, put sauna there quite high <laughs> on the agenda for sure. For sure. That makes, yeah. us, makes us a peace of mind for us. Yeah. Great, thanks so much. Um, and then I think I would like to ask uh, both uh, Budi and Alicia something about um, what has been uh, difficult or maybe different from your point of view, uh, maybe even towards your experiences before, uh, during your studies before, uh, sort of what has been challenging in your journey in Finland and maybe if you can share what has helped with it. So Budi, you could go first maybe. Uh, well, unfortunately, I could start with the like, um, experience of mine. Uh, I was, before I come to Finland, like I was living in Italy for almost like five years. And like, I was like so friendly and, you know, uh, like easy going with everyone. But like first time I came here, like, as you mentioned, like uh, Finnish are so quiet and actually no response at the first days. I, I didn't know that like, they are like this, this is their culture. Uh, that was like, um, I thought that maybe I took a bad decision <laughs> to come here, but I, I understand now, like it is very, very cultural thing. It's not them, like they are so uh, good people, helpful. Actually, there are like many, many things that they did to me, like to help me actually. So other than that, I, I don't see any difficult thing. Even Pori is a small city, it is really convenient. You, you have all things that you need. For example, even though you didn't uh, speak Finnish, uh, but you can like get the old service, even uh, a small city like this in English. So it is really international now. Um, I don't think uh, I have, any difficulties here well that's very nice to uh, nice to hear but i'm sure many of you have sort of experienced the same that you come to especially if you go to any of the smaller towns 
you come maybe in a Sunday afternoon or something and nobody's there. And it's almost like there's been a nuclear holocaust and nobody, <laughs> nobody's anywhere. But uh, I remember having, having brought some international uh, guests over to Finland, for example, smaller towns, and they're like, where are everybody actually? Because <laughs> that's the thing. But once I'm happy to hear that if you have somehow gotten past that. How about you, Alicia? You are, um, you are of course, a little bit, uh, Sri Lanka is, is further away than Spain, but um, I'm sure you have experienced also the same with the quiet Finnish people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there was um, one of the main differences I, I encounter as well. But I think, well, for me, the main challenge and difference was kind of adapting to the cold and darkness because I come from a very warm country. But then um, there are also many things that you could do to like kind of like survive during winter, like, I don't know, like going to sauna or meeting with friends. And even at the university, there were a lot of initiatives to like help us. So we, for example, especially last year with the pandemic, we had in our program, the teachers organized an online weekly cafe. So we would meet every week on Mondays afternoon and, and just have like a like an like a chill cafe to talk how we were doing how we were feeling and things like that i think really helped um and then well thinking about like the main differences that i encountered on on my studies not only us for like living in in finland which i think are very influenced by my previous academic background and my previous experience was uh well the first thing is the flexibility that i that I felt in the studies. Like I started, when I started this master's program, I had to create my own study plan. And I was like, I, I was used to having a much more, I don't know, like straight program. And also that flexibility was seen in terms of assignments. Like I haven't done a multiple choice test or an exam in all this program. Like we've always had a lot of variety and flexibility for like assignments, like, um, I don't know, like writing learning diaries, essay, we even created like an online escape room in and, and a video game in one of the courses. So that's something that was really different at first, but now I really appreciate it because it's kind of like really pushed like creative and critical thinking. Um, and then, well, the second major difference I think was um, related to research that I'm studying now in a research focus program so I'm like writing my thesis in collaboration with a research group and that's not something really that um, I I had in my previous background and I think it's really important for for the for education so yeah like well and yeah like I think another like also difference is was that um, I didn't really feel like it was a like there was a lot of hierarchy like it's not a hierarchical system at all so like all the staff and teachers were always like really supporting the students and always like welcoming feedback and and promoting other things such as like the weekly online cafe that I mentioned so um yeah I think like well you always my encounters and differences but now I'm really used to them and I I really like them so so yeah Thanks very much for sharing that. Of course, I was maybe trying to dig out some uh, negative things that you have had to adjust to, but of course, those are very positive things from our perspective. But like I, like you said, for example, the studying styles or the like sort of the level of autonomy that we we have, uh, especially in the university studies, but actually even even earlier than that, it's sometimes uh, challenging to overcome because maybe you are used to something else. But of course, that's that's a key characteristics of uh, Finnish education in general that uh, we, we uh, sort of believe, especially on this level that you 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 know best actually what is interesting to you and then we give you the freedom to to kind of create your own path but happy to hear that uh, you are you are now uh, you you now like it rather than <laughs> than suffer from it i guess um maybe uh before i uh, turn to the last question uh from uh, quinn i would also maybe like to hear from you uh maybe what has been uh challenging or um uh, for some something that is very different in Finland than what you are used to in Vietnam. For sure, we don't have proper Vietnamese food in Finland at all, I think. Yeah, of course, the food is one of the significant things that we always, you know, miss when we are far away from home. 
and I, especially I was uh, located in a quite a small city. Uh, so we don't have like the Vietnamese restaurant there or, you know, the Asian market, but uh, we try to, you know, to carve it. Sometimes we, the Vietnamese group, always like gather together and we make some home food. And it's not uh, something so big that um, we have to, you know, cry or uh, feeling so homesick all the time. Um, but I think one of the most uh, difficult that I come here that uh, in the first year is the kind of shock for me because everything here is a little bit like different, like a very di a big different from uh, the Asian country, you know, from the uh, environment, from the studying system, from the teaching methods, you know, to the every small thing in the daily life. Uh, but then actually the, um, our school like give us a lot of the care and the guidance and also the support package. And we always like have, we always like be able to seek help from inside or outside the campus and our voice are always heard. So we don't feel lonely at all. And uh, the international friends community here is, is also like um, active and always be there for you. And also in some, we have the slogan that mm, no one's left behind. And yeah, everyone is friendly and kind and always there to support you, to guide you through every kind of difficulties that you have. So yeah, like uh, it's just the kind of show at the beginning, but then yeah, together we got through that. So not apart from, you know, the cold, the dark, um, the coldness, the darkness and everything, everything should be fine. I survived until now and I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really happy to hear that. Actually, you might all think that this is crazy, but now having lived here in Singapore for some years, I actually miss the cold and darkness sometimes <laughs> because it's so in, in our, but uh, I'm sure when you live through it and it's your first winters when you are actually there it's it's nothing something maybe to laugh about but when you embrace maybe in the in in some of the winter activities but i i think I, what you pointed out also is the the peers that you have maybe vietnamese friends within the same school or other asian friends or other international friends i'm sure that also helps to um, adjust for for sure maybe uh, to, to to kind of overcome that that's great. You had, I think you've all had very good strategies to, to, to overcome these. I think uh, since there are, there are not too many questions on the chat, I would like to encourage the people to, to maybe put forward some questions. We still have, I think we will go a little bit over time, but that's okay. Uh, uh, so, um, but then since we don't have uh, too many questions to, to take on now, uh, then I would like to pose this last question to all of you uh, specifically. So I would like to know uh, what are your what what is your future look like? What are what are your plans for your future? Uh, what is maybe your dream job or your otherwise your path towards? And how do you think Finland and the, your studies now uh, are helping you on your way? So that's the question. I could start maybe with um, uh, with Budhi for this time. Please. Uh, well, uh, I think my future maybe I'm most likely trying to find a job which is like very related to nature -based. and also I'm doing the tourism international management so I think those all go very well together. So I think um, I like to stay here and then maybe continue, maybe get the masters as well. And if I if I could find a good job like as I wish, I, I, I would say that I would I would stay here and then continue continue my life here. That's great, and that's something that Finland really wants you to do nowadays because uh, uh, of course. Are, uh, we are not so many people in, 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 in general, so of course that's something and a key message also to our international students that we don't, not only want you to come and study with us, but we also want to come uh, so, so that you will stay and, and, and work with us and, 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 and stay in Finland. But that's great that it's in your plans. How about you, uh, Huiha? How, how, how about what are your, your future plans? Um. First, I will I try my best to graduate from my university, and then I will spend one year uh, to like uh, intensely studying Finnish because when 
I really want to work in the marketing uh, or human resource management. That is the two fields that I want like I want to work. And uh, in order to do that best, I must know the Finnish cultures and uh, really understand what is Finns like. So uh, it's uh, by by learning the language and speaking to them, I, I must understand the jokes. The way of humor is really different from uh, Asian humors and even English spoken uh, cultures as well. So. Uh, I have to really learn that, and uh, after it, I will. I hopefully find a good company that I can work for them and be there, be here in Finland. Yeah, that is my goals. Thanks for that, and I think that is also uh, a very um, ambitious uh, target to learn Finnish. But of course, that will definitely help you not only, of course, with the work, but also with the with trying to assimilate and, and of course that's something we even though we don't require that from our international students of course we encourage that that it, it will help but uh, I think it's uh, um, sounds like a good plan uh, to me how about then uh, maybe Ekaterina do you plan to stay in Finland or maybe go back to Russia or what are, what are your future dreams or plans every time people ask me about it I had like the same answer that I put so much effort into achieving what I have now. So I'm not gonna <laughs> go back. I'm gonna only move forward and forward. And of course, I wanna implement all skills I'm currently receiving at Hanken at uh, here at the Finnish uh, market. And I think maybe my particular wish is to try to work at some kind of startup because I already had the experience of working in like some kind of big Korean corporation back in uh, Russia. And even though it was like kind of interesting and maybe more kind of safe when it comes to all these like uh, working requirements and so on, it's not kind of so maybe flexible and funny to some extent but when it comes to like working in startup it's some kind of new challenge new opportunity for you so and this flexi of course like i know that in the majority of finnish companies like the flexibility when it comes to communicating and working in my environment is a must it's not like a secret but still i think that uh, attempting like like having this opportunity to be in part of a startup is a must that's a very good point also and, and of course something that uh, I think it's also very much growing in Finland and we're already there but uh, we have quite a lot of, quite a vibrant startup culture and something that would be uh, also the government for example is, is trying to, to support very much so I'm sure there will be more and more opportunities for that especially even if you wanted to found your your own startup even then uh, yeah. th that too is yeah. very very recommendable. Great. Uh, then I may maybe move to Ohenaba then uh, about your future plans. Right. Uh, so regarding future plans, um, Finland uh, and IT and technology are kind of synonymous. So there's a lot of opportunities here. And um, I, I'm graduating quite soon and I have already gotten lucky in, well, not lucky, it's quite common. So uh, I've been poached by a company to basically work for them, which is a, a, a recurring theme amongst my classmates that uh, while sometimes, because it's a four-year degree, some people got poached already after first year. So there's a lot of opportunities here. And um, yeah, I, I got, I've started working for a fintech here, uh, fellow finance, and um, I'm doing software development for them. And um Assuming that was not the case and I was not working for them right now, I would say my dream position would be in something that affects the lives of people and um, uh, yeah, affects the lives of people and then provides some kind of positive uh, use for, for people. So uh, healthcare, finance, um, and then also like uh, something altruistic supposedly would be nice. And um, I... Definitely, if I were to estimate that within the next 10 years, how much of that I would spend in Finland, I would 
definitely say more than half of that would be spent in Finland. I really like it here. That's great to hear. And I'm sure you are specifically in one of the fields where that poaching that you mentioned, I'm sure it's happening. I'm yeah. hope that I, I know that the, the the colleagues in Metropoli are eager to, of course, keep you there to, to find, finish your career, but uh, yeah. the, the degree for sure. But uh, I'm sure it's a good point that it's also very possible to work alongside your, your studies already. And of course, that's a very good way to already secure a job when you are finally finished or already have a job. So I think uh, it's a good point there. And I, another another angle I think it's that you pointed out is that, is that you, even if you have, uh, or especially when you have a, a mission and a vision to kind of uh, change the world for the better, for example, technology is definitely something we believe in in Finland that is is a is a key way to go. But of course, many others, as well. Um, maybe I will ask Alicia then to to share about your future plans. I, I think that uh, you definitely you are on uh, an education, you are uh, also in one of those uh, future making uh, paths. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, thinking about the short term future, um, I first like to graduate and then get some practical professional experience in, in the Finnish education system. But um, in the long term, and that's also my, my dream job, uh, and after studying in a research-based university and program, I would like to pursue a PhD in music education and continue my career in academia in teacher training programs. So bringing aspects from like music and inclusive education and research-based programs. So, yeah. That's, uh, thanks very much. And I think that's, again, one of those very good points that you pointed out that for sure, a very good path forward is to continue your studies, continue to a PhD and to continue into research. And that's something our universities are also very happy to support. And I'm sure, uh, for example, University of Helsinki is one of the most international uh, universities we have in, in this respect as well. I think I, I see that the colleagues are already posting about the links where you can find out more about these uh, the sort of uh, students' perspectives. So that please take a note of all the links that our students are now posting there. Then I think I will um, uh, ask uh, Quinn to to tell about your future plans. Um, okay, I think uh, up until the end of this year, I will uh, concentrate on my graduation first. And uh, after that, we will have like, I will use like one year of uh, gap year so that in that year I can explore more about, you know, Nordic, the Finnish country or Europe in, uh, in general. And during that year, I also want to focus um, on planning about my uh, own business idea because, uh, you know, from my school being inspired and nurturing kind of um, a very startup, a startup environment. We have to get a lot of setup cam. We have been uh, going to a lot of competitions to selling our idea or pitching our idea. We have a lot of uh, event meeting with a lot of mentors and entrepreneurs. So uh, yeah, that's why we got a lot of support and as well as the encouragement to start up our own business and our idea here. And uh, I think even though our school located in a quite smaller city, but the uh, the the, the school and uh, also the city like collaborate closely with each other to support us and give a lot of practice and also a lot of chance to meet the local company or uh, the entrepreneurs something like that so yeah it's uh, it like it um it enhances our, my connection and so my networking life a, a lot more and of course um i got a lot of uh, practice skill and also the knowledge from uh, the study, the course, and everything like that. And one great thing, I uh, one great thing here, I think, is the Finnish government. They support a lot when you want to do the startup or you want to do the your business here. You can find a lot of information and support from them. So I think that would be a great thing for anyone who have interested in, you know, opening a business here, even you are a foreigner. But yeah, so that's I think that's basically my plan in the future, and I keep cross finger for that. All the best with, with that. And I think something, again, you pointed out 
is that we also believe that even if you, for example, take a gap year, I think there's much value in that because you need some time to maybe find your own path and and, and, and for example, these kind of gap years, uh, whether it's before your university studies or within or afterwards are very valuable and they, they sort of bring you more added value uh, in, into the, the on top of your studies, for example. And especially if you go into a business uh, of your own, that sort of practical touch to everything you, you will definitely need. Thanks for sharing that. Then I will ask our, our students in, in Yvaskula to, to close this future plan circle now go ahead please yeah i can go so um for me i think i want to stay also in finland and work here uh, i was saying that since i arrived in finland actually that i really want to stay in this country um and i don't have yet like a fixed uh, plan or a job that i want to do but uh with the courses that i'm taking like in the university i got many ideas of what I could uh, do, because when I finished my bachelor in education, I thought that I can become only teacher, but there are more, uh, much more, many, many more way out. So uh, well, one option is to uh, work at the university, either as a research, uh, researcher, research assistant or university teacher. Another plan is to work at an NGO because there are many in uh, Finland that are very well organized. And um, well, some other plan would also be to work at a school, probably either international school or if I manage to learn uh, fluently the Finnish language, I would definitely <laughs> want to get this experience from the school environment. But yeah, I don't have something fixed, but um, from my experience here, I really appreciate the lifestyle and um, how the government uh, respects the citizens and the opposite. So it's a city that I would definitely, uh, a country I would definitely like to live in. Yeah, yeah. Same goes for me. Uh, I also like to stay in Finland. Um, so next semester I'm starting my thesis. So I'm just starting to look for a company now there I can do my thesis, and then with in mind that maybe after my thesis I can stay at the company and work for them. So it's like a good introduction to already the work life. If I see I would like it, if the company likes me as well, and then I can just stay here in Finland <laughs> and have a lot of sauna air. <laughs> that's, that sounds good. Yes. And I think uh, indeed the internships, like we discussed with already with uh, Ohaneba, that um, that's a very good way to find your path into the working life. And uh, especially since both of you are actually in the, uh, or, I mean, Milan and Ahana, but you're in the IT fields, and uh, especially that's, that is very important uh, it's a sort of uh, angle into this. I wonder if our um, audience has any further questions. I think that there's already been lots and lots of information shared on the chats and uh, hope you will uh, access those links and find out more from the different, both with the universities, but also with, for example, the student ambassador networks that uh, the colleagues have been posting about. And uh, I think to, like we discussed before, these re references and the kind of first-hand information from other students and alumni are, are so important. So I think that uh, that's one of the very good ways to kind of uh, get further understanding of, uh, of Finland. So unless there are any um, uh, further questions, uh, I will just mention that if you want to also find out more, about the study research and, and work opportunities Finland has to offer. We are actually producing also a, a full on webinar series that is starting on October 7th, that is called The Future is Made in Finland. And uh, my colleague uh, May has already posted uh, the link to register there a couple of times. Uh, you can find that also through the study in Finland. Uh, website and um, we will also highly encourage you to, to, to register and find out more. There are different universities that are producing those webinars and for example health sciences and future digitalization are some of the themes that are, are portrayed there. But yes, unless there are further questions, I we can maybe uh, close this discussion and I would like I would like to just really warmly thank all of our student ambassadors our students in this panel for for your very honest hopefully they were honest <laughs> honest comments about Finland and your experiences and I hope you uh, wish you all the best with your future plans and of course your current studies and 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 finding your path in 
either in Finland or somewhere else. So um, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, uh, have a good weekend there in the autumn Finland that I a little bit miss now in the <laughs> Singapore heat. So thanks very much and uh, um, uh, hope to welcome the audience to Finland soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.